Okay, so tell me, have you seen these before? Um, actually, this one, I... No, I don't think so, but I... Um, after I sent it to you, it struck me that it could have been... I mean, I'm not sure though, but I thought maybe it could be um, chronic granulomatous disease, and maybe these could be the interferons, because I don't have any other... Okay, video. okay, that's okay. That's okay. I hope you see this question in an actual paper because we're going to grill this really hard right now. Okay, so we can see that they've okay. given us some sort of serum electrophoresis. Okay. okay. And then, okay. it's a 12-year-old boy. He's admitted to the hospital because of lethargy, hip pain, and a temperature. He's, he has fever. Okay. Okay? okay. And he has been hospitalized several other times because of pneumonia okay, okay. we're gonna stop over here and you're gonna tell me what is the differential diagnosis that's coming in your mind right now um, until here I thought maybe it could be sickle cell anemia okay it could be sickle cell okay good could be sickle cell what else Not really sure of any other. Hmm. Give it a thought. He's having recurrent infections, right? Recurrent pneumonias. Okay, but uh, I couldn't make a connection between that and the hip pain. But if it's re oh, recurrent infections. Yeah, because he's having pneumonia, right? Um, cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis could be. Yes, yes, good. What else? Um, maybe it could be um, B cell deficiency. Okay, a B cell deficiency. Like you said initially, it could be CGD. Yeah, CGD. Which is chronic granulomatous disease. Granulomatous disease. Good. Excellent. Okay, good. Because we need to think along as we okay. do the question. That is very important. Okay. Okay, Her, his neonatal period was normal. Fair enough. Complete blood counts are within normal limits. Good. Okay. And a test of HIV okay. HIV antibody is negative. Blood cultures grow staph oleus. Interesting. Okay. Wonderful. So now tell me, does sickle cell, if the patient has sickle cell crises, okay. will it grow? Okay, wh what is the connection between sickle cell and hip pain? Salmonella. Sal could be, yeah. Salmonella? Salmonella? Okay, but this guy Salmonella. is growing staph aureus. Could it be a possibility? Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure that the sickle cell is mostly related to uh, encapsulated organisms. Okay, okay, fair enough. But you see that usually if, if, if you're thinking about osteomyelitis, in a, in a patient with sickle cell, because that's what you're relating it with, hip pain, right? You need to look for salmonella. Yeah. Okay? Staph aureus doesn't do that in... Yeah. yeah. Okay? Okay, so now it's given us a serum electrophoresis. And we need to figure out which one is the... Most likely. Probably. Most likely. Okay? So now tell me, yeah. if it's... Okay, so now we know if it's a... It's it's a serum electrophoresis, and we've sort of ruled out sickle cell. Yeah. Okay, we have cystic fibrosis, B cell deficiency, CGD, or any other immune deficiency syndrome. Okay. 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 So I want you to look at these electrophoresis and tell me okay. what's happening in all of these. What is different and unique to all of these? It's the gamma, which is varying widely. Okay, it's the gamma. It's the gamma chains which are varying widely. Okay, so tell me, what is this gamma? What is this gamma? Uh, um, it could be, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could be the interferon, like I already said, um, or it could be IgG. It could be IgG. 
okay okay fair enough why why igg why not igm Okay, okay, uh, we're going to skip this question right here, and we're going to study serum electrophoresis first, okay. okay, because I don't want to answer the question for you, you're going to answer it for me, okay? Okay. Good, okay. excellent. Okay, so you can see a picture over here, you can see it, right? Yeah. What these scientists did was that if you have a blood vessel, obviously you're going to have lots of blood in it. And in the plasma of the blood, you have various proteins. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Could you name some proteins for me? Albumin. Albumin. Good. No cheating. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, globulin. Globulins. What is a globulin? That's the immunoglobulin. Huh? The immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulins. Good. Are they protein? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're proteins. Good. I said no cheating. Good. Okay, what else? <laughs> don't tell me a cathode, okay? <laughs> no. no, I don't see them. <laughs> okay. Um, um comp okay. I'm not sure whether they're a protein, but for the sake of it, okay, complement. Okay, so you have all sorts of globulins, okay, because globulins, what globulins means is a protein which is folded in a three-dimensional structure in a globular shape. Okay, so you have all sorts of globulins which include the immunoglobulins like you said, okay, you have for example the thyroid transfer, the thyroid binding globulin. Make sense? Yeah. Then you have haptoglobin. Right? Make sense? Then you have, for example, antithrombin 3. All these are proteins which are floating in the all of your clotting cascade. Okay. Okay? All these are proteins which are floating in the plasma. Okay, so when they do a protein electrophoresis, I'm sure you're smart enough to tell me that what happens when you subject different proteins to a current? They're going to separate according to their different lengths. Right? Makes sense? So you see you have your positive electrode here, your negative electrode here, and here what they've done is they've charted out all the proteins according to their charge and structure okay. okay so you can see there's too much of albumin over here okay and they call this the albumin peak and then you have the alpha 1 peak you have the alpha 2 peak you have the beta peak and you have the gamma peak okay, okay? and you see all of these are globulins like we already discussed and you see over here you have the alpha 180 which is the alpha 1 antitrypsin does that sound familiar yeah, yeah. where where does this play a role in alpha 1 antitrypsin emphysema you see you get so you see you have its presence in the blood as a globulin then you have transcortin then you have thyroid binding globulin then you have antithrombin 3 you have factor 10 Heptoglobin, alpha 2 macroglobin, PT, okay. factor 8, transferrin, fibrinogen, and lastly, immunoglobulins. Okay. Is it falling into perspective now? Yeah. Good. So, immunoglobulins are not just the IgG, but the, entire but the entire thing because they're proteins as well. Why don't you like them? <laughs> Okay, all of the IgG, M, A, D, E, all of them. Okay. okay, and before we answer that question, because I want you to answer that question for me, does this page seem familiar to you? 
Yeah. Are you sure? Oh my god, okay, yeah. yeah. What is this? Right here. That's electrophoresis. That is the protein electro. And you know, I got this page just for you because I know that you, you know, you'll feel probably embarrassed because you know it's right there, but you never paid attention to yeah. it. Okay? Yeah. Here you have albumin, here you have alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, gamma. Yeah. Okay, these are your globulins. Yeah. And by the way, this is the M spike. Now, an M spike does not mean that it is IgM. Okay. I'm going to do this in which color? Let's make it red. It's not IgM. No, 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 no. M means it's monoclonal. Okay. Okay. It could be okay. IgG, it could be IgM, it could be IgD. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. The M here means that it's monoclonal. Okay. Okay, so you'll see such a rise in your gamma globulins in okay. which states, which but diseases? Multiple it's seen in multiple myeloma. Excellent. What else? Um, Waldenstrom's macroglobulin. Good. Waldenstrom's because what's happening in these diseases is, tell me, what's happening? The, the immunoglobulins go up. The immunoglobulins go up and hence the gamma fraction of the electrophoresis goes up. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Good. Okay. So now tell me, look. Distinguish from Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia with an M spike. Now, this is a monoclonal spike again, but in this case, it's an IgM. Okay? okay? But in the case of multiple myeloma, it is an IgG. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay, so tell me if this is your serum electrophoresis of multiple myeloma what if you're immune deficient I just want you to think about it okay. what's gonna happen when you're immune deficient and I want you to answer this question okay. so, um, it's gonna be option D it's going to be option D excellent why tell me okay. Because the gamma, uh, there's no gamma. Because there is, the gamma is practically non-existent. Yeah. Right? This is probably your normal state. E is probably, oh, and it says normal. I never knew that. You see? It says this is normal. Yeah. Right? This is your normal. Yeah. This is probably a guy with, guess, 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 come on. A. That's multiple myeloma. That's multiple myeloma. Excellent. Or Walden, oh, excellent, or Walden storms. I always want you to think these two side by side. Good, excellent. This is probably me having fever. Okay, this, I don't know, it's something wrong with this dude, but whatever. This is your, this guy has probably an immune deficiency. It could be combined variable immune deficiency syndrome. Or it could be any of those immune deficiency syndromes, but just because he's having recurrent pneumonias okay. and because he has grown Staph aureus. Now, Staph aureus is an encapsulated organism, and encapsulated organisms require what do they require for phagocytosis? Um, Complement. They need an antibody, right? Yeah. Because they need to be opsonized so they can be removed by the Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly? Yeah. Good. I'm glad it does. Good, good, 